So I will talk about the open SRA project, a seismic risk assessment for natural gas uh, storage and transmission systems. I'm the PI, but the project manager is critically important. That's Jenny Watson Lamprey from uh, Slate. And Norm Abramson is also a key member of the executive committee, but it's, it's more than the three of us. It's CEC funding, co-funding by peer. It's a good example of how peer researchers can get together and go after large funding. And peer is very supportive of that. So look for those opportunities. But besides Berkeley, we have UC San Diego and UNR. We have the, the, the National uh, the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, the Slate at uh, the Sim Center. It really takes quite a few people. And in fact, the research team, this is a list of most of the researchers. And you can see it's, it's a healthy group of people, both uh, within peer as well as key consultants that are helping us move this research forward. It's critical to engage and learn from the, uh, the natural gas industry and our utility providers and also have them guide and provide uh, direction to us as well as share data, most of it through a, a non-disclosure agreement. But PG&E and their staff have been incredibly supportive. So CalGas, the CEC and, and others have provided a lot of input to this program because we're, we're meeting a need in industry. So industry has to participate and they participate through this technical advisory uh, board. The primary objectives of this research are to implement user-driven research to develop a seismic assessment tool for natural gas systems. So there is, there is some research to be done here. And then to focus on producing an open source analysis tool that can implement these updated methodologies for the assessment of seismic risk to both underground and above ground natural gas infrastructure. This new tool is going to play an important role because it will have the capability to identify those areas of highest risk in a robust manner, overlaying with population information to help regulators and utilities prioritize their risk reduction programs or projects. This is kind of an overview uh, it ties us together. Our focus is open SRA. In the end, all research is complementing or moving this platform forward. We're focusing on demand issues. Quite a bit of work has been done by peer and ground motion, so we're capitalizing on that. And we're moving forward with specific issues in terms of ground deformation from landslides and liquefaction, as well as fault rupture. A key aspect of this is capacity and looking at above ground systems and also below ground systems, all the way from the natural gas uh, uh, storage systems that are in the state of California, and then the, bringing those, the gas up to the surface, transported along surface infrastructure and, and equipment, and then moving it underground to, uh, through the transmission system, and then the, the primary distribution center. A key aspect of this is developing fragility curves that capture the uncertainty which in some areas where there's very little data should be very large. And as data is collected, you can reduce that. There is a open SRA website at PEER. So please go there and look at the tool and look at the research uh, being done. A key element of this to make this work over the entire state of California, as well as within regions is to speed up the calculations. And Norm and Maxime have been leading this effort uh, part of this is to move beyond the common approaches of numerical integration or Monte Carlo sampling and use approximations to the EDP and DM and DD models to allow an analytical calculation of the pure integral. And then also to use something called a um, polynomial chaos to speed up the calculation within the integral as well as handling the epistemic uncertainty, which is a very important component of different models and integrating those models together. Instead of using uh, the normal approach of, of branches, make a combined model that integrates that to allow us to actually speed things up. So we're looking at both the approximation, making it 40 to 100 times uh, speed up compared to using a Monte Carlo sampling, as well as the analytical, uh, their approximation as a 100 times speed up without a significant loss of accuracy. It's within 5% uh, 
in terms of establishing the 10th and 90th percentile fractals. Liquefaction is a key element. And, and in overview, I'm just giving you a, a sense of the things that this team is working on. Uh, part of this is, is understanding where liquefaction occurs and then moving it forward to looking at how much lack, li liquefaction induced lateral spreading will occur. Uh, this is one part of that, looking at uh, the likelihood of having uh, a liquefaction displacement. So those hot colors are the ones that have a, a probability of LDI, the lateral displacement index being zero. So not having a lateral spread uh, is, is low, um, and those are the red spots. And that aligns fairly well with what we saw after the Loma Prieta earthquake. Another key element is doing analytical analysis. So we're using abacus both above and below the ground. This is some modeling where Tom O'Rourke at Cornell has done split block modeling with the uh, Negro facility. And that has allowed him to uh, give us data that we can then use to calibrate our numerical models. And then go forward with the idea that once we have a calibrated model, do a wide sensitivity study and identify those parameters that are most important and focus on those few parameters that really control 90, 95% of the risk calculation to get the speed without the significant loss in accuracy. The Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, the Berkeley Lab is doing the focus on the gas storage system as well as the cap rock system. You can kind of see that we store gas at a certain elevation, a certain depth, the cap rock is important, and of course, the integrity of the well itself and then its integrity with the cap rock is important to not allow uh, a significant uh, uh, loss of gas to the atmosphere with risk that could be associated with that. One of the most obvious, uh, because we live in California, is fault rupture, uh, but they're looking at dynamic shaking as well as a direct shear from fault rupture. This is some analysis that they're performing, very sophisticated analysis to look at the interaction of the pipe, it's casing the system with fault rupture. And now the idea is to use 30 some odd parameters and look at all of those with the mean and standard deviation, and then be able to identify what's most important. And for example, for this interaction study, the fault angle was the most important issue that really focuses the geologist on this problem. Cement properties were important as well as depth. The idea is to develop fragility curves from this analysis once we have confidence in it. Another aspect of this is not just to model, but to do experimental testing. There hasn't been as much done on piping systems. There has been some component testing, but each component is different. The group at UC San Diego working with UNR have been the leaders on this. And this is the testing program that they have uh, implemented. And you can see one of their tests here on a four inch T joint for out of plane testing to understand how this system is going to respond to cyclic loading. They have normal instrumentation, but as we'll talk about later, they have other type of instrumentation to really move forward in terms of understanding the performance of this pipe system. And then this is, as far as I know, the first time uh, a system of a, of a system, a system model testing has been done. This is at UNR, you can see the two uh, shaking tables. And this is a mock-up of a realistic piping system for above ground. The system is moving over so it can get the travel it's required for this large displacement event. And in a bit, you're going to see the uh, shaking which is obviously the uh, we're looking at systems of about 30 feet apart being able to model the interaction of the piping system to this differential ground movement it's a differential ground movement the displacement whether it's transient or permanent that largely determines the performance of the system before they did in any uh, experimental work, uh, a key aspect of this was to do the numerical analysis of the above ground pipe system. So uh, Elide working with Tara and Dave and others have really done a tremendous job of looking at the abacus models to first inform and decide what testing should be done and then do the analysis of those experiments and make some class A predictions before the experiments are done and capture the response. 
you know, thicknesses of the pipe in the area of loading make a significant difference in terms of the capacity and the, re and the resistance of the system. And then they've also looked not just at the piping system, but also the above ground infrastructure. Uh, this is a wellhead system coming off. Uh, and then there's also a number of other facilities that are or equipment that's used to actually process the natural gas. And the bottom line is this analysis comes up with fragility curves and that fragility curves and implementing them within open seas is a key aspect of this research. Uh, Professor Soga, Kanisha Soga with his group uh, have looked at what we call a smart gas infrastructure sensing of wells and pipeline connection performance. There's a lot of movement in this area, distributed fiber optic sensors, uh, wireless sensor networks, remote sensing, magnetic flux leakage that can be used, but how practical are they? Uh, how can they be used in field implementation? So the idea is to identify those things that can inform open SRA. So we have a feedback loop. So we can, the idea is to have this instrumentation in the ground. So as an event occurs and after an event, we can identify where uh, there might be an issue and uh, speed up the, the inspection technology and help us become a more resilient uh, system. So it's, it's looking at model parameters, action parameters and model response parameters and to uh, demonstrate those. Uh, all of the testing that was done at UC San Diego on components was done with normal instrumentation, but it was also done with these fiber optic cables and other sensors, which are continuous along the entire pipe. So they're not spot measurements, but they're continuous measurements. And they also went to the piping system that I showed you the movie of at UNR and, and did uh, um, captured that as well. This is uh, a test done on a pressurized pipeline. It, it mimics an underground pipeline, but they're able to get strain along the entire pipe or deformation along the entire pipe so they can basically get strain. And they've actually just installed this at one of the well systems uh, at a natural gas storage system to be able to look for breaks in that system or performance of that system along the entire uh, wells. Everything is focused, however, on development of open SRA and Slate with, uh, with Berkeley, with Norm and Maxine and the Sim Center has been a key element of this in terms of working with the, the peer team to develop a open SRA platform that is user friendly. Uh, I'm just going to show you some simple screenshots. Much of the data for our natural gas systems are covered under NDAs but the gas companies and the CEC can implement that once we hand over the software to them. This is just an example gas pipeline that's hypothetical that goes through the Bay Area. Um, we have overlays of geologic maps. Anything that the CGS, the California Geological Survey has, we can pull that down and inform and the user can look at that. The bottom line is the results. And so for example, this is now just showing a uh, number of repairs per kilometer. Uh, this, the hotter colors show more repairs. You can see in areas where there might be lateral spreading, any permanent deformation, you have higher levels of, of repair rates. That's the final, one of the final results, but we, we're going to go more sophisticated than that. This is what is traditionally used in practice today. The first beta version was released in February, 2021, and this gave the utilities and the CEC a chance to, to work with it and get feedback also from our entire team. We had some preliminary models in terms of how to deal with ground shaking and the other ground deformation hazards and simple fragility curves, which a key element of our research is to improve upon those. The beta version uh, showing you some of the results of just uh, a part of California. We can do the entire state of California and with Maxine and Norm's work, do it quickly. And you can see hotter colors are showing areas where we have a prediction of, of a higher uh, amount of damage or a, uh, a, a level of, of earthquake shaking. The second beta version is going to come out very shortly. It will bring in the polynomial chaos, so it'll be able to do multiple uh, hazards. It'll handle spatial correlation. And then we expect the third beta version to have the integration of the fragility curves from the research projects in spring of 2022, and then the final version 
in fall of 2022. So in, in summary, uh, this project is a large project, a nearly $5 million project, possible because of peer and peer researchers working with the CEC and the gas company and consultants that have been a key element to that. We have, we're performing research to characterize the seismic demands and make advances there, developing an efficient, user-friendly seismic risk assessment open source, source software, OpenSRA. And that OpenSRA, we feel, is going to be a tool that can help regulators and, and the, uh, the utility company to identify those areas of greatest risk in a, in a logical way, very importantly, characterize the uncertainty and motivate uh, stakeholders to actually invest in reducing that uncertainty to have a clearer picture of where they should prioritize their future projects. Thank you very much.